hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is dr bisaya otokiti and today i'll be taking us through another series of something very different from what we are used to this is called venture capital management you can see venture capital management you can say new venture creation they are series and these are the series i'll be doing this time around not just on statistics i'm trying to deviate a little from statistics we can see is a new background see this beautiful man here late professor sunday you will talk it see and this is my own picture in my office this is where i work this is where my salary is being paid so today i'll be taking us through a topic that is very important for startups for entrepreneurs for people who are intending to start up a new business and what are we going to be looking at we'll be looking at sources of financing there are lots and millions of ways in which we can generate finance for our business but i'll just be talking about the few that i have researched into and how it can also help you to improve your finances especially when or if you are a startup business a startup business means a business that is just starting up or you are just about to start then we also know that financing is needed to start any business and what is the output of that once you invest into a business the output is profit making there are various methods like i said earlier to consider when looking for startup financing and you can you have access to as many as possible that you want to have access to but one very unusual one that people hardly pay attention to is called bootstrapping and what do i mean by bootstrapping bootstrapping can be defined as starting up your business from things that seems irrelevant to other people and let me give us an example um i want to go into carpentry for example or into fashion designing and i have a machine in my house but i don't have a shop i don't i don't i don't have access to finance i can as well start from my own where i am and start gradually and talk to my friend i have a machine i make clothes i for men for women for children and patronize me and gradually they start coming you have a single machine from that single machine you improve to two from two you improve to three to buying industrial like that from the little money you gather from that business if you look at that business sincerely you have not really exerted any too much costs so bootstrapping is starting your business from things that seems irrelevant or eliminating every possible cost eliminating every possible cost you can also say bootstrapping is the process of starting your business from 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 a little beginning <laughs> to where you are going to it means you are just gathering everything at the least possible cost to start that business small very small scale business or individuals use bootstrapping as a means of finance because hardly will you get anybody to get to give you finance even if you go to the bank you know the interest rate is so high and many people are running for from paying interest rate so the basic idea of bootstrapping is what you have to be creative you have to look for ways and method to start that business and eliminating every possible cost don't forget that i made example of fashion designing and i said you have a single machine maybe when, while you are in school you have saved to that buy that machine and now you are done from service you still don't have enough money to start on a large scale start from where you are start getting clothes and materials to to make for friends family and be be, be timely be 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 creative be be also be excellent at what you do be in no time you see that people will keep patronizing even though you are you are far away you are not in an open place you are doing it from your home make good designs and before you know it 
from one machine to the second to the third and you move on like that like we said bootstrapping is one of them another way we can get finance is through family and friends through family and friends or before family and friends let's say personal savings like I said this is just for startup businesses personal savings you might have been thinking of starting that business in the past few months or few weeks let's assume that you're a copper and the first month that you have been posted um, the first month that you have been posted you have desired in your heart that I want to start this business so why are the youth service the monthly money and the monthly gains you get maybe from government or your PPA you save a part of it and at the end of one year you have more than enough to start that business that is called personal savings or personal resources sometimes it could be from real estate sometimes it could be an equity loan sometimes it could be from your retirement fund sometimes it could be from an insurance policy that you have made when if you are not a youth couple i'm just trying to make different example for you to know that it is not just limited to anybody so far you can see it then you can achieve it then another source of finance is friends and relative recently i got into something they call a job and i was just hoping to see the way it works friends and family you can do something like that you can talk to one two three or four friends as i was driving down to work this morning I t something came to my mind there is a piece of land that is that is extremely far inside the bush and it is about 10 plots but as far as it is it is also relatively cheap and I was talking to one of my friends that we can gather together, 10 of us, let's buy one, one plus from this land. Let's leave it for four years or three years. In another two, three years, this land that seems very far would now become very expensive. So friends and relatives, we can get money from them, maybe from our parents, from our friends, from our uncles and like that to start up that business we have talked about bootstrapping we have talked about personal savings we have talked about friends and relatives then we can also there's something we also call business alliance and what does business alliance means it constitutes of forming cooperative agreements with another firm to generate revenue and reduce costs so it could be you can join a cooperative society and for you to join a cooperative society, you have to read the terms and conditions. Where I work, I'm in the cooperative society, and I know from my monthly salary, there's a percentage that goes into the cooperative account. And once I want to get any money from cooperative, as much as I have, I can get a multiple of theory of the money that I have in the cooperative. Then I pay back over 24 months, that is two years, and I don't think that is a bad idea after all then we can also another source of finance is loan from banks bank commercial banks microfinance bank um there are even development banks now there are agricultural banks that specifically government gives out money so that you can have access to this money but you know getting money from the bank the bank manager will always require five major things from from the people or the person trying to get that money and what are these five major things we call it the three c's we call it the three c's and what are that th the three c's i think collateral condition capital um collateral condition capital I'm trying to see the the other ones okay i think okay getting getting money from commercial banks the bank would always consider the five c's and what are the five c's one is character the second the your character the person that wants to get the loan the character of the person that wants to have access to the loan then also capacity to pay back what how do you want to pay back how do you intend to pay this back within the specified 
period of time then also we want to know your capital your capital what are you able to pay back this money that you are trying to get then collect uh, what are you using to stand for the money you want to get then we also have some conditions that will be put to you from the bank we that is not all that we have there's something we also call equity financing and when we talk about equity financing what do we mean we mean we equity financing means exchanging a portion of the ownership of your business for a financial investment in that business we can also say equity financing means ownership stake resulting from an equity investor or investment that is equity financing like the word equity it means that once you you have an idea you don't have the money to finance the idea i'm giving you the money to finance this idea to have a stake in your business to have a share to have a percentage in that business i usually make this i this example a lot for example you have an idea and and you don't have finance the idea is what he, he, to start the idea or to run the idea we need let's say 50 million i'm giving you 50 million automatically I become the owner of the business in Yoruba they say Antonio lo new so systematically I become your boss I become your director I I make I make I make suggestions that you have to consider I make I I I give you ideas and like that because of what because one you have all you have is the idea you don't have the money to finance it so I'm giving you the money to finance that business to have a share or a stake in that business that is what is called equity financing and when we talked about when we talk about equity financing equity financing can be in two major ways and the first one is called angel investors and the second one is called venture capitalists and what do we mean by angel investors angel investors are successful business people who invest their money in startup businesses they are called angel and this has been in practice since the early 19 the early 19th century where wealthy business men invest in lots of other production i can remember that of 19 the 19th the 19th that i read or 1990 that i read that, uh, that was a, a set of wealthy businessmen that invested in broadway production this is not a case study in nigeria i think is about then also we can say indian investors are, are also known as affluent individuals who invest capital into businesses that are start up usually in exchange for ownership or equity in that business don't forget that i said they could be successful business people or they could be people who, who wealthy individuals that invest only in startup businesses then another thing we need to consider we, we will say angels investors usually invest in technological products that is in areas where they can recuperate their return on investment very fast they are also termed long-term investors because it, it, to to get their return on investment it usually takes between five to seven years and i can say that is long enough they also seek return in in they they seek a return commensurable to the risks that they are involving in this like i said they they try as much as possible to get return that that equates the risk they are being involved in then also angel investors could be like we said earlier could be individuals could be business owners that are interested in helping startup businesses to survive and to grow and their objective may be more than just focusing on economic return they could also have mission to to that they could also have mission focus that they are still interested in profitability and security of the investment then another thing we'll be looking at are called venture capitalists and who are venture capitalists 
venture capitalists from the world venture capitalists are not individuals venture capitalists are they are they are they are companies that invest in startup businesses and most times i say the venture capitalists are the intermediary between the owner of the money that is that is the the lender and the borrower they are the company that stands in between them the lender of the money sometimes they are not individuals and most times they are not individuals they are corporate organizations they are insurance houses um, education endowment fund pension houses the money they get from such places don't forget that that money belongs to the public and it is not supposed to be just be not it is not supposed to be to be it, it is supposed to be used judiciously so any means of uh, squandering that money could lead to something bigger so like we said venture capitalists are, are, are companies that invest in startup business they are they are also called financial intermediaries that is they take the investors capital not their own and invest it directly into portfolio company a venture capital firm invests only in private companies and take an active role in monitoring and helping in the company to see it grow because they have to reap back their return on investment they have to reap back their investment and the profit on the investment their investment is utilized to fund the internal growth of the company and their primary goal is to maximize its financial return by exiting investment through either sales um, management buyout ipo that that is initial public offer the venture capital activities include investing monitoring and finally they exit the business then also another important thing for us to know about the venture capital is that a uh, most times venture capitalists expect between 30 to 70 percent return on their investment for startup between 30 to 70 percent return on investment for startup then we also say venture capitalists are finan uh, financing that comes from company or individuals in the business in investing young and i've said that earlier so there's no point repeating that and also they look like i said they a uh, they they are into what monitoring investing monitoring and exiting the business of that they have invest into the venture capitalists also like we said for the angel investors venture capitalists also want to invest their money in highly technological products or ideas that can give them the expected return on investment in the least possible time then venture capital firms are usually focused on creating an investment portfolio or businesses with high growth potential resulting in high rates of return these businesses are often high risk investment they may look for they may look for annual returns of 20 to 30 percent on their overall investment or portfolio like we said they invest in high risk business to get what high profit to get high return on investment because these are usually high risk and once something is high risk it means a lot of money is also coming as their return on investment i hope you have enjoyed this video and i would also be expecting your comments in the comment section below if you have any question don't hesitate to reach me through the comment section my social media um, my social media pages are also linked below please don't hesitate to contact or reach out to me god bless everyone for watching bye